Hey guys, welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit, Am I the A-hole? This one's from user WriteJack77. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister to stop using the word family on me like it's supposed to mean something? Backstory. I was kicked out at 15 for being gay. From 15 to 35, I had no contact with family. Over the years, they have somehow managed to work their way back into my life, only in a small capacity. My sister, who is younger than me, called earlier and asked what me and my husband were doing for Thanksgiving. I told her that it was just us and that we were just going to have a nice dinner and probably watch TV for the night, and go to bed early. She told me that she was having dinner and that we need to show up. I told her thank you, but this was the first set of holidays in 10 years that I didn't have to host and I was planning on staying home and just putting on a fresh pair of pajamas after a shower and not going anywhere. She then asked about Christmas, and I told her the same thing. She then asked when it would be a good time to get together. I told her point blank that I wasn't at all that interested giving our history and that I was perfectly happy with how things were at this point. This is when she got angry and started to yell at me saying that I need to start acting more like a part of the family and that I need to let go of the past. She told me that we, as a family, need to try to bridge the gap and move forward in a positive way. I told her, no we don't. We hardly know each other. We are very much strangers. I also told her she needs to stop throwing the word family around like it's supposed to mean something to me. When we started to talk again when I was 35, when our dad died, her and my brother constantly berated me and told me that I need to just let them deal with everything that needed to be done. I never disagreed with them. I told them that they could handle it. I was berated when our mother was sick for not visiting her in the hospital or when she was home. I really don't have much of a relationship with my mom and she is a pretty good stranger as well, so it didn't really matter. I threw everything back in her face. Before we hung up, she reminded me that it wasn't my husband's blood that runs through my body. And blood is thicker than water. I told her no. My husband's blood did not in fact run through my body. But his seed did, and that was close enough. I thought my husband was going to wet his pants. So, am I the a-hole for telling my sister to stop using the word family like it means something? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Sunlit Fable says, not the a-hole. I feel like it would interest her to know the real saying, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Bonds formed by choice run deeper than those by relation. Edit to add. This is apparently not actually the true saying. My apologies for misinformation. Thank you to the commenters who let me know I was wrong. Gallagrins says, not the a-hole. The last paragraph made me bust out laughing. No, you're not the a-hole. She lost the ability to call you family when she abandoned you with the rest of them. Adila Bean says, not the a-hole. I hate when people use family to manipulate people into doing what they want. Family means nothing without the actions to back it up. Kicking a kid out at 15 is pretty unforgivable if you ask me, so you owe them literally nothing. Well done for standing up for yourself, and I'm howling at your final line. So good. Yeah, OP, you're not the a-hole. You just called her out. She has no right getting angry at you for not wanting to be part of your family now after they kicked you out. It's been 20 years. My question is, besides from trying to sweep it under the rug and bridge the gap, have they actually tried to apologize to you? Or owned up to what they did? Because if they haven't, then I don't think they have the right to call you family. But that's just my opinion. Let's continue now with an edit from OP and then we'll move on to the update. Edit. Good morning everyone, I hope that you are all having a great day. First, I wanted to say thank you for all the responses, awards and everything else in between. This has been completely insane. I never thought this would go so far. I have tried to read every single response, but there are so many that it will take hours to get through them all. I wanted to do this edit to fill in some blanks so to speak. When I was kicked out I was 15 and my sister was 8. So she did not have anything to do with what happened, but she had every opportunity to find me after a certain point. When she was 16 and had her own car, she could have come find me. 
When she was 18 and on her own, she could have come to find me. She never did. When our dad died, it was a friend of mine who talked me into going so that I could maybe find some kind of peace with what happened all those years ago. She and another friend went with. My husband, boyfriend at the time, had to work and couldn't get the time off. Initially, I was greeted with surprise and thank you for coming. But then with hostility from my sister and brother. If they for a minute thought I was out to get something from them or our dad's estate, they were wrong. I wanted nothing and to this day, I still don't. My siblings have always told me what my place in the family is, which is basically I'm window dressing. I have been told that I have no business in knowing anything about the family finances, family affairs or anything. I think that they are afraid that I could potentially take something that they want or are supposed to get. A couple of weeks ago my mom asked me to read over some financial paperwork that she didn't understand. Reluctantly, I agreed, but once my sister found out, she screamed at me for putting my nose into areas that I don't belong. I told my mom not to ask me for anything again because I will not be involved. I have been asked a few times why I do keep in contact with them. The answer is because it's my way of keeping ahead of them. I do not voluntarily make contact with them. I have no reason to. I keep my Facebook blocked down to the point that I don't show my city, my job, my phone number, nothing. But I can see all of their stuff. This works because they post a lot and if I see that they are having problems with whatever the case may be, then I can work to make sure that if they ask for something, I can not answer or just ignore them altogether. Plus, it does give an open avenue for communication in the event of a major emergency. Plus, maybe I still hold on to a hope that they will maybe at some time they will actually apologize, but I don't see that ever being the case. I have been asked if my mom has ever apologized. She has not, and she never will. She is from a generation where parents don't apologize to their kids, because that would mean they did something wrong. She is from a generation where kids were to be seen and not heard. I guess it comes down to this. My family has formed this dynamic that I will never be a part of or want to be a part of. And I'm okay with that. I was not asked to come to Thanksgiving or Christmas. I was told that I will be there. Why? I don't know. Then, when I declined twice, things got ugly. Thank you all for your replies and support. Okay, I guess I got my answer. They've never apologized. So, yeah, OP, F them. I'm sorry that you don't get to be with your family for these occasions. Even though they don't act like your family, it does suck when, you know, families get estranged. But the good thing is that you're forming your own family now with your husband. Hopefully, his family has also taken you in. In any case, let's move on with the update to see what happened. We had such a great day. Just see my husband and I. We had steaks on the grill, baked potatoes, steamed veggies and a from scratch pumpkin cheesecake. Tuesday and Wednesday, my mom and sister were tag teaming my messenger all day and until I reached my limit and finally answered my sister. She told me when they were planning on eating and that I needed to arrive earlier. I told her point blank that I was not coming to dinner. Out of my own curiosity, I felt like something was wrong and asked her why it was so important for me to come. They have been telling some family members that I was going to be at dinner and that everything was okay and I was part of the family again. This is important because many people from both my mom and dad's family have had nothing to do with me, but never completely approved of what my parents did to me. This was my breaking point. This put me over the edge and I told them I was not going to cover for them and that this was the end of all of it. It was their fault for creating this issue and they will need to deal with it on their own. I told her I was done and that to never contact me again. I ended the call and immediately blocked all communication. The level of anger that I have towards them is to a point I can't even describe it. But at the same time, I feel relief that they gave me a reason to terminate all communication with them. They are completely on their own. True to form, on Thanksgiving Day, C and I took showers and put on clean pajamas and watched movies all day and then ate dinner. And then, back in front of the TV. Before I end this, I wanted to thank you all for your support and encouragement and kind words. Here's to a great holiday season. Wow, OP, your family has won their entry to the Hypocrite Hall of Fame. 
they brought this on themselves and it's a good thing that you had a reason to cut all contact. So here's to you and your husband, the best for this holiday season. This one's from user Thenins9. Would I be the a-hole if I essentially let down my friend when I'm her only option? Both 18 female. Using the mobile version, so obligatory apology for the mistakes, especially for a terribly and rapidly written text. Ugh, just so sorry for all the errors you'll find, lol. So, tomorrow we've planned to have a picnic in some historical monuments, all under health protection measures. But since the country is doing okay and the cases are considerably low, we're permitted to go out before curfew. Here's the thing. My friend just texted me, like less than two hours ago, not asking me, but telling me that we will be going together to the picnic. I was like, huh? The thing is, no one has a car. My friends just got their driving licenses. I'm still working on mine. And we will all be taking the bus to reach the place where we're hanging out. I told her that I live very, very far away from her and she can't expect me to wait for her to get out of some language courses she has in the morning. So, wait for her for three hours while my friends wait for us in another part of the city. Come all the way where she's at, lose money and time and energy just so I can go with her. Especially since I've already made plans as to how I'll go, aka take the bus which is two minutes away from home drop off nearby the place we've decided to go to, where a friend of mine who lives there will drive me. And she just told me in the last minute instead of like two days ago. She got very hurt and countered by saying that she hasn't seen us in months. That she wouldn't be coming if I don't come get her because she doesn't go around the city in buses and doesn't want to get in one alone. That she's relying on me and that basically... I don't want to come get her so that I can meet my friend, who is going to drive me. At that point, I just told her coolly that I'm going to call her back later. My friends, who we're hanging out with tomorrow, told me to just come alone, since waiting for her will end up in me staying there for two hours instead of the normally agreed upon five hours. Curfew, you know. But I feel kind of bad because I know she genuinely thought I wouldn't say no. So, would I be the a-hole if I told her that, no, I won't be helping her out on this one? Or should I just wait for her to finish her morning lectures and go get her? The judgment is, not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Boxy Yet Foxy says, not the a-hole. She doesn't go around the city on buses? Did my lady's chariot lose a wheel? It's an utterly ridiculous plan to start with. And for her to announce this rather than ask is pretty rude. If she doesn't want to get the bus alone, she needs to figure out alternative transport. Is she new to this city? Is that the issue? Cause that's the only way I can understand her needing help navigating transport as an 18 year old. Mama Karen Yu says, not the a-hole. Your friend assumed you'd be willing to do something that is inconvenient for you in order to make it easy for her. If that's her expectation, she should say so up front, not wait until the day before. You will continue to be not the a-hole if you calmly and kindly tell her that her plan doesn't work for you and that you hope she can still join. This is how we teach people what our boundaries are. Calmly, kindly tell them what works for you, then calmly stick by them. Teresage says, not the a-hole. Your friend is a grown adult. She can use her cell phone to help her navigate the bus system and meet the rest of you at the picnic. If she can't do it on her own, she doesn't need to meet you. But you aren't her nanny. Yeah, OP, I gotta agree with everybody here. What's up with your friend? She's demanding that you help her out the day before and then she gets upset when you say it doesn't work for you? No, that's not right. She's trying to manipulate you into helping her out. All of those things that she said that she doesn't get to see you guys that often and that she doesn't drive around the city in buses. What is she, five and her mom doesn't let her? No, she's 18. She's a grown person. She should be able to do this without a problem. Also, smartphones, like that commenter said, I'm pretty sure Google Maps can give her the best route. So yeah, like the second commenter said, you need to draw your boundaries with your friend and tell her, hey, this is as far as I go, but I'm not gonna do this for you. You need to figure it out on yourself. 
So no, OP, you would not be the a-hole. And also, you are not her only option. If that's how she's trying to make you feel, then again, she's trying to manipulate you. And the fun thing about being an adult is you can't throw a tantrum or be upset when you don't get to do something because you have responsibilities. So if she has classes in that morning and that just cuts off the time she'll get to enjoy being with you guys on the picnic, well, then that's reality and she needs to be okay with that. But of course, that's just my opinion. So how about we all now move on to the update to see how OP resolved this situation. Don't know why I'm even posting an update, especially days after everything happened and we all moved on. But I was scrolling through my profile and noticed the post just lying there and wanted to clear the air, so to speak. Especially since I felt good about the whole business. I took the not the a-hole comments to heart and told my friend that I'm sorry, but I couldn't help her out on this one. At the same time, she sent me a message apologizing for her behavior and that she shouldn't have dropped that on my plate out of the blue on short notice. Especially when it seemed that my plans were set. No, really, she sent her text at the same time I did mine. It was eerie. We ended things on good terms and, joy of joys, I managed to convince her to take a cab on her own. Told her which ones she needs to take. Our country has a different approach when it comes to transportation methods. What to say to the taxi driver and followed her up on the phone till she met us at the agreed place. She was proud that she took the initiative and we were proud of her for going out of her comfort zone like that. We had a really, really good time. We laughed till we couldn't breathe and everything seemed normal again. Man, missing the pre-health crisis life hard. So thank you to everyone who took the time to comment on my post. And be safe. OP's edit. Hi everyone, I just wanted to say, wow. Just wow. Thank you so much for the kind words. I admit, I teared up a bit. I've just had a terrible weekend and this helped me remember that there were better times. That there's going to be a better time. Oh, and thank you for the awards too. Seriously, thank you. I've read and reread every single comment and every one of them made me smile. I'm going to try and reply to everyone a bit later, but I wanted to clarify a few things first. For those wondering, no, there's no cultural references as to why she couldn't come alone. And girls are permitted to go out. Of Course, I'm a girl too. Now, I wouldn't go and say that the streets are 100% safe, nor that taking a cab or bus is an easy thing to do in our country. So I totally understand her reluctance to take the bus alone, especially if it's her first time. And if circumstances had been better, I wouldn't have hesitated to go to her. I'll admit that it was a bit weird when she insisted that I should come get her, even when it became apparent that the alternative way to reach us was taking a taxi because she's familiar with our cab system and she takes one almost every day. But once again, now that I've given the situation some thoughts, it's completely understandable. I can't fault her for wanting to feel safe. Oh, and Google Maps works just fine. I use it regularly, even though I'm familiar with the streets because it's better to be safe than sorry. And once again, thank you on my behalf and on her behalf too. For those of you applauding her daring and how she quickly came to her sense and realized the way she went about the whole situation wasn't that great. She's a wonderful, amazing girl who deserves every bit of encouragement you guys gave her in the comments. Well, apparently OP and all of the other commenters are much better people than me because I was like, no, she needs to find her own way, she's an adult, let her deal with it. But that's beside the point. The good thing is that OP and her friend are on good terms, they were able to solve the situation just fine and everybody was able to be there at the picnic and have a great day. So good for you OP for being a good friend and also standing up for yourself. And also good on your friend for realizing what she did was not cool and that she wanted to fix it. All the best to you OP, take care. This one's from user Coconut Thunder. Am I the a-hole for how I responded to a senior HR member accusing me of taking drugs at work? Background. I have diagnosed bipolar disorder. I've been on medication over a year and it's the best damn decision I've ever made. That being said, I have a tendency to go off my meds when I'm manic. 
It's not fun when the meds wean out of my system and I go nuts. In order to not sabotage myself, I take my meds every day at 11am. It helps me settle myself for the rest of the day and keeps me on a strict schedule. Incident. My workplace has shifted online fully. We had a Zoom call yesterday with HR to update everybody on bug measures going forward for the upcoming quarter and it was about 30 or so people on the call. HR has been anal retentive about people keeping their videos on throughout the meeting. Nobody is allowed to move out of the screen. The meeting began at 9 a.m. 11 a.m. comes around and my alarm buzzes to remind me about the medication. I moved slightly out of frame and took them while still on the call. I didn't think anybody noticed, but apparently this senior HR person, we'll call Q, did. The meeting wraps up at 12 noon and as we're all getting ready to sign off, Q tells me to stay behind after everybody leaves, in front of them. I found that unprofessional but held my tongue. Q then launched on this long diatribe about how I am setting a hostile work environment by taking my meds during work hours, that I am being neglectful of my duties and that I am ruining my body with them. When I finally got a chance to respond, I said that the drugs I am taking are prescription medication and that I fail to see how the 5 seconds it takes me to take them is creating a hostile work environment. I said that my medical history is none of their business and since they have failed to demonstrate any real harm in the situation, I didn't feel like this discussion was warranted. Q looked like they swallowed sour milk and told me they'd be writing me up and that I was officially being warned for my behavior. I saw red and right after the call ended sent an email to the head of HR, R, summarizing the conversation and refuting the warning and write-ups. I stated the relevant legal protections accorded to employees in such situations and that I hoped R would address this fairly. R looked into the matter and I learned later that Q had been suspended without pay. A bunch of my co-workers caught on to what happened and are now making it very difficult to work with them. Apparently, Q was a popular person in the office and they felt that complaining to the head of HR was taking it too far. This entire situation feels utterly surreal and I can't think of any reason why I'd be the a-hole. But I'm facing an uncomfortable work situation and want to know if I need to apologize and smooth things over. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Max Advice says, not the a-hole. If Q had behaved appropriately, they would never have gotten suspended. It's probably worth noting to the higher ups that this report got spread, which is creating a hostile work environment for you. Giraffe5 says, not the a-hole. Q was shockingly unprofessional and out of line. Actually surprised they got suspended though, but I think I'm just used to crappy HR departments not doing anything. Also, a hostile work environment is an HR member calling you out to talk privately in front of your coworkers. OP responds, honestly, I think the only reason Q got suspended was because I brought up legal provisions. Cajun KC says, not the a-hole. Unbelievable. You did the right thing. It wasn't Q's soapbox to get on and it doesn't matter what the medication was for. It was a prescribed medication meant to be taken at a certain time. That's all Q needs to know and frankly, Q doesn't even need to know that much. Replace bipolar disorder with any other medical condition, diabetes, heart condition, and it is just outrageous behavior. OP responds, I think Q may have suspected this is a mental disorder prescription because I have certain disability accommodations. OP, you are most definitely not the a-hole. If anything, Q behaved like an a-hole the whole time. First of all, asking you to stay behind after the meeting ended with everybody there present? No, they should have sent you an email asking you for a private meeting. Then saying that you were creating a hostile work environment for going out of the screen for 5 seconds to take a pill? That's just stupid. And on top of that, it was definitely Q who leaked what happened to them after you talked to the head of HR. And that created a hostile work environment for you. So yeah, you are definitely not the a-hole here.
So now, let's move on to the update, which by the way, has a major plot twist in it. So my original post blew the F up. I'm overwhelmed with all your supportive responses. Thank you so much for the kind comments and advice. It helped me shine up the old spine. It turns out there was a lot I was unaware of, including a second team group chat that I was not a part of. A colleague, Alex, gave me background. Apparently, the whole team knew about the HR meeting through the gossip mill. Q told my supervisor, G, about my disability. G then told everybody I was aggressive and hostile and scared Q with that look in my eye in the meeting. The just no mill in the wild. Turns out, Q's axe to grind had nothing to do with work at all. I met her son in a bar shortly after I started working at the firm in January and we went on a couple of dates. He wanted me to meet his mom right after dinner on our second date so she could get to know me. He meant approve, and I noped the F out of that relationship. He went r slash nice guys on my butt and I promptly blocked him. When Q connected the dots that I was that B her son dated briefly, it enraged her that I, of all people, rejected him? Through G, she had been whispering in people's ears about how, because I needed medication to feel normal, I'm clearly not fit to be working such a high-pressure job, let alone date her precious baby boy. She has insinuated I am an addict, a liability, and a danger to the people around me. Second report to HR. I'd been quickly iced out of two lucrative projects and people were hesitant to work with me. I made records of all the retaliation, took a statement from Alex, and went straight to an employment lawyer before I sat down with R. We set up a meeting for 9am on Monday. Q was asked to be there at 9.30. And once all the receipts were produced, not only was she fired on the spot, but R also promised to fire G. Negotiations for a generous settlement are underway. I've decided to quit my job here once I get it and use the money to support myself till I find another job. This was a terrible workplace and I've come away from this feeling insecure about myself. It really hurt to be treated like this. Once again, thank you all for your advice and support. Edit. For the people messaging and commenting saying this is fake, you're entitled to believe what you want. To everybody that's left supportive comments, thank you. R came through damn quick on this because I got a lawyer involved and they knew delaying it further would have turned out worse. I'm amazed at how quickly everything unfolded over a weekend, but the peace of mind I'm feeling is sweeter than I can describe. Edit 2. I do not live in the US. Our systems do not work like yours do. Oh Reddit, a world exists outside of America. Well done OP, you managed this fantastically. And about Q? This is why you never make business personal. Don't be an idiot. If she didn't like your son, well, there's a reason for that. And it's not on you to seek any kind of revenge, which, by the way, got you fired. As a side note, OP mentioned r slash nice guys. You should definitely go check out that sub and also check out r slash nice girls. I hope you guys enjoy them. And that's it for this video. If you'd like, here are other videos from my channel that you would enjoy. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.